varna srishti like we know that there are four varna so we see the creation of ati shudra uh, varna in 7th century but uh, and after that there is no one sp uh, spoke about the uh, this scenario uh, why there is a differentiate between uh, why there is a like fraction between the shudra and ati shudra these people used to uh, live together and after that we see that uh, in like uh, 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 fule is like talking about in uh, in uh, his uh, one of his book uh, uh, about the dialogue between the one satya shodak person and uh, and mahar person and he generally focusing about why the uh, like uh, these bhat bhamans are uh, they, uh, psychology uh, uh, psychology and socially making uh, slaves to uh, making uh making a uh, uh, conscious about uh, uh, they are slave to this uh, hegemonic system and uh, social order so uh, and he in this text we see the fule consciously provoking provoking people and making awareness yes there is a real reason behind your slavery and it is belong to the brahminical uh, Uh, hegemonic uh, thinking and it is kind of related to the bhatvaman and uh, to their system like uh, you are uh, uh, faith and uh, belief system which is like generally is a superstitious uh, so i call uh, professor ajmer sir to, uh, to represent his सबसे पहले मैं हिंदी में बोलूंगा हिंदी का अध्यापक हूँ तो फ्रीक्वेंटली हिंदी में बात करूंगा मुझे लगता है कि मेजोरिटी में लोग हिंदी जानते हैं अगर किसी को कोई दिक्कत है कि उसको हम कुछ बात इंग्लिश में भी कर सकते हैं फूले जयंती के इस अवसर पर यूडीएसएफ के माध्यम से जो कार्यक्रम हो रहा है ये बहुत लंबे समय से चली चली आ रही परंपरा का आज का एक नया अध्याय है इसके लिए मैं आज की टीम को साधुवाद देता हूँ कि आने वाली आने वाले वक्त में भी वो अपने से पीछे आने वाले विद्यार्थियों को इस धारा से जोड़ कर रखे जो बातें अभी हरीश जी बात कह रहे थे उन्हीं में मैं कुछ चीजें जोड़ करके अपनी बात रखूंगा जिस तरह से भारत के इतिहास में फूले की उपस्थिति है प्रेजेंस ऑफ फूले इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री भारत के आधुनिक काल में फूले का आना भारत के इतिहास को एक नई गति देने वाला काम है अगर आप फूले को थोड़ी देर के लिए निकाल दें अपने मेमोरी से बाहर कर दें और फिर भारत के इतिहास को मॉडर्न इंडियन हिस्ट्री को फिर देखिए वहां पर किस तरह के सवाल हैं जिन सवालों को 19वीं शताब्दी के शुरुआत में जिन लोगों को चैंपियन के रूप में बताते हुए कहा जा रहा था कि राजा राम मोहन राय आए वो सवाल उनके साथ भी नहीं निश्चित है क्यों नहीं होंगे क्यों क्यों होंगे उनके साथ जिस भारतीय समाज जिसको अभी कुछ दिन पहले एक में वीडियो सुन रहा था जिसमें चंद्रभान प्रसाद कह रहे थे भारतीय का मतलब है भेदभाव करने वाले समाज की पहचान भारत का समाज क्या है भारतीय की जब हम बात करते इसका मतलब है Divided into caste and varna and so type of uh, different types of uh, discriminations. Equality is जहाँ पर equality नहीं थी, उस equality को, उस समानता को पहली बार भारत के आधुनिक काल के में के उस दौर में 
जो थी वह फूले उठाते हैं हम हम क्योंकि हम क्योंकि जिस तरह के दौर में जी रहे हैं उस दौर में हम हर एक चीज का संस्कृटाइजेशन करते हैं उनका नाम ज्योति नहीं है लेकिन सारे तरफ ज्योति ज्योति हो रही है उनका नाम ज्योति है लेकिन हम उनको ज्योति ज्योति कहे जा रहे हैं तो संस्कृटाइजेशन की जो कि हर एक चीज जो संस्कृत में होगी हर एक चीज जो ब्राह्मण के मुख से निकलेगी वही पवित्र होगी और भाषाओं के मामले में भी उसने उस पवित्रता को खराब किया है जो एग्जिस्टेंस ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस का जो सवाल है तो भूले जिस सवाल को कह रहे हैं भूले अपने माध्यम अपने उस संघर्ष के जरिए इतिहास की धारा को बदलने वाला सवाल उठाते हैं वो इतिहास की धारा वाला बदलने वाला सवाल क्या है इतिहास की धारा बदलने वाला सवाल है शिक्षा का सवाल इतिहास की धारा शिक्षा से बदली है उस धारा में उनके साथ चाहे शेख जुड़े हों शेख के साथ साथ शेख भाई बहन जुड़े हों या और भी कई लोग जुड़े हों उन सभी ने मिलकर के जिस तरह से एक कंस्ट्रक्शन किया उसको डिकंस्ट्रक्ट किया जो पहले से काबिज था और वो एक नए तरह का कंस्ट्रक्शन किया जो इतिहास से गायब था तो डिकंस्ट्रक्शन के खिलाफ कंस्ट्रक्शन की जो अवधारणा है फूले के माध्यम से हम उसको देख सकते हैं कि जो सवाल उस पूरे समाज के जिस समाज को आप कह रहे थे कि ये तो नालायक समाज है ये तो अनटचेबिलिटी वाला समाज है ये तो खेती करने वालों का समाज है ये तो वंचित शोषित महिलाओं का तबका है इनको जो किसी काम की नहीं है जिन लोगों को भारत का जो सो काल जो उसका जो कल, कल्चरल वैल्यूज थी जो उनको कह रहे थे कि देखिए ये तो किसी काम के नहीं है इन पर क्या बात करना इनका क्या इतिहास लिखना इनको क्या ट्रेनिंग देना एजुकेशन की तो एजुकेशन को तो देने का फायदा ही नहीं होगा इसलिए उन सारे सवालों को भूले ने उभार दिया और भारत का इतिहास जिसको हम इतिहास में जो अठारह सौ पचास के बाद मॉडर्न इंडियन हिस्ट्री की बात करते हैं और उसके बाद जिस तरह की धारा बदलने लगती है तो फूले एक सिंबल के रूप में उन सभी तबकों के बीच में एक रिवोल्ट के रूप में उपस्थित होते हैं उनकी जो एग्जिस्टेंस है वो इस लेवल पर है कि अगर फूले न हो तो हमारी एग्जिस्टेंस भी सवाल उठने लगता है उस दौर में फूले नहीं है तो बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर कहाँ से आएंगे उन सवालों के साथ उनको उन सवालों को बनाने में और 20 साल लगते हो सकता है ज्यादा भी वक्त लग जाता उनको बने बनाए सवाल मिले और उन बने बनाए मामलों में मुद्दों पर वो फिर से अभियान चला करके आगे बढ़े तो ये बहुत बड़ी चीज है जो फूले ने पूरे भारत के जन समुदायों को दी वर्किंग कम्युनिटीज को दी या कहें कि सो काल जिनको हिंदुइज्म की फिलोसफी में शुद्रा अति शुद्रा कहा जा रहा है फूले उसको अति शुद्रा अति शुद्रा अति शुद्रा की ट्रंप को एक तरह से नए तरह से पेश करते हैं वो कह रहे हैं कि इन सभी लोगों को इकट्ठा होकर अपने हकों के लिए अपने अधिकारों के लिए अपने वजूद के लिए अपने अपने एग्जिस्टेंस के लिए खड़ा होना होगा और वो खड़ा कैसे होंगे वो एजुकेशन को लेकर आते हैं हंटर कमीशन को देखिए हंटर कमीशन के सामने क्या कहते हैं सभी के लिए शिक्षा की प्राथमिक शिक्षा की व्यवस्था करना सरकार का काम है राज्य का काम है ये स्टेट की रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है कि सभी के लिए वो शिक्षा की व्यवस्था करे और भी कई लोग इसी तरह की बात कह रहे थे यहां पर अगर हम कहें कि भारत में जिस तरह से वर्ण व्यवस्था का केंद्र उत्तर भारत बना हुआ है मैं ये नहीं कह रहा है दक्षिण भारत में वर्ण व्यवस्था नहीं है वहीं से भी ज्यादा है लेकिन केंद्र कई नजरियों से बना हुआ है वर्ण व्यवस्था का केंद्र 
उत्तर भारत आजकल बना हुआ है उसके बहुत सारे कारण है पोलिटिकल सोशल कल्चरल बहुत सारे रीजन है और इन लोगों के द्वारा ही उन रीजन को खुद अपने ऊपर लागू करवाया गया है नोइंगली अंग अन नोइंगली अगर आप आ, प्रोफेसर तुलसी राम का एक आर्टिकल जो उन्होंने 2014 मई 2014 में लिखा था और उसके आर्टिकल की आखिरी लाइन में पढ़ रहा था उसमें वो कहते हैं कि भारत में काम करने वाली दलित पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को डिसबैंड कर देना चाहिए वो रीजन दे रहे हैं कि डिसबैंड करके क्या करना चाहिए उनको जाति विरोधी आंदोलन चलाना चाहिए क्योंकि वो पार्टियां अपने अपने जातियों के बीच में जो शेड्यूल्ड कास्ट हैं, बैकवर्ड क्लास हैं, वो उनके बीच में जाकर के भी जातियों की ही प्रतिष्ठा कर रही है वो जातियों की प्रतिष्ठा को उनको किस तरह से हटाया जाए तोड़ा जाए जातियों की प्रतिष्ठा नहीं करनी है जातियों को तोड़ना है भूले भी यही कहते हैं और उसके बाद बाबा साहब भी यही कहते हैं तो भूले जो जिस सवाल को कह रहे हैं कि इन इन प्रश्नों को लेकर के इन मुद्दों को लेकर के हमें आना होगा तो और वो प्रोफेसर तुलसी राम इस सवाल को दलित और मोदी नामक एक उस आर्टिकल में जो जनसत्ता में चार मई दो को चौदह को छपा था जिसमें उन्होंने ये कहा था कि ये पॉलिटिक उनके सामने थे बहुत सारी शेड्यूल कास्ट की पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज थी कि वो क्या काम कर रही हैं वो तो जातियों की प्रतिष्ठा में लगी हुई है इसलिए उनको जातियों की प्रतिष्ठा नहीं करनी है उनको जातियों को डिसबैंड करने का अभियान चलाना है और डिसबैंड तभी होंगी जब आप लोगों के बीच में जाकर के उन पोलिटिकल पार्टीज की वीकनेस के बारे में बताएंगे लेकिन इतनी हिम्मत वाले लोग इस देश में शायद ही कोई हो ज्यादातर तो लोग पिछलघु ही होते हैं कोई कोई लोग कोई कोई व्यक्ति होता है जो उस धारा को बदलने की हिम्मत उसमें होती है लेकिन वो जिसको वो उनके हिसाब से वो कभी कभी आता है और जब वह धर्म बढ़ जाता है तब आता है लेकिन हमारे हिसाब से वो उस वक्त आता है जब हमें न्याय और लड़ाई की जरूरत होती है लीडरशिप देने के लिए वो आ जाता है और वो कहीं किसी से उस नजरिए से नहीं आता है जो नजरिया उनका है बल्कि वो इसी धरती पर अपने हकों के लिए पैदा होता है तो वो पूरा दौर यहाँ पर हम बात करें कि फूले जिस सवाल को लेकर के चलते हैं कि जो जिन जिस तरह के मुद्दे भारत के समाज को चाहिए उनमें से शिक्षा प्रथम मुद्दा है अगर इनको क्योंकि वो कह रहे हैं कि, कि जो है आपकी जो विद्या बिना आपका सारा कुछ नष्ट होता गया विद्या बिना मति गई मति बिना नीति गई नीति बिना गति गई और उसके बिना वित्त गया और ये सारा अधर्म अविद्या से हुआ अगर आपके पास अविद्या अविद्या यानी आप नॉलेज लेसनेस आपके पास थी आज आपके पास ज्ञान था ही नहीं इसलिए नहीं कि ज्ञान आप हासिल करने की कैपेसिटी आप में नहीं है बल्कि इसलिए एक सिस्टम बना करके आपको ज्ञान से महरूम कर दिया गया इसलिए जब आपसे ज्ञान से आपसे छीन लिया गया तो आपके वो भी जानवर के बीच में कोई फर्क नहीं है जानवर को एक डंडा मारिए आपके बदले में स्विंग मारेगा हिंसा प्रति हिंसा करता है लेकिन आदमी जो करता है वो सोच समझ करके हिंसा करता है उसके पास बुद्धि है और वह उसी बुद्धि के हिसाब से वो अपना एक्शन लेता है पता है कि मौका मिलेगा थब सिंह मारना है आज ही सिंह नहीं मारना है तो ये मेरा कहने का अर्थ क्या है कि विद्या पा करके और विद्या को अपने नियंत्रण में रख करके उस पूरे लोट ने जो बहुत सारे भेदभाव करने की पूंजी जिसके पास थी उस पूरे विपुल भारतीय समाज को विपुल यानी बड़ी संख्या के आबादी को साधनों से ज्ञान से वंचित कर दिया तो ये साधनों और ज्ञान से वंचना का के खिलाफत करने के लिए फूले कह रहे हैं कि आपको मोबिलिटी में भी आना पड़ेगा गति मोबिलिटी में आना पड़ेगा आपको मनी भी जुटाना पड़ेगा 
आपको एक तरह से अपने आप को अपने उन सारे सारे मुद्दों के साथ फिर से आना होगा अगर आप इन सारे मुद्दों के साथ आएंगे तो ये समाज एक तरह से आगे बढ़ेगा और आप अपने हक हासिल कर सकते हैं एक महत्वपूर्ण तो सवाल इसी में एजुकेशन से जुड़ा हुआ वो दूसरा उठाते वो गुलामगिरी का एक अभंग का अभंग है एक उनकी पोएट्री का एक छोटा सा टुकड़ा इसमें वो कह रहे हैं मनु जलकर खाक हो गया जब अंग्रेज आया ज्ञान रूपी मां ने हमको दूध पिलाया अब तो तुम भी आगे आ जाओ भाइयों पढ़ लो मेरा लेख ज्योति कही तो ज्योतिबा फूले जो ये सवाल उठा रहे हैं कि मनु जलकर खाक हो गया जब अंग्रेज आया क्या क्यों वो विद्या की ही बात कर रहे हैं स्कॉटिश मिशन स्कूल में पढ़ने वाले ज्योतिबा फूले जिन्होंने अपनी एजुकेशन 19 1847 में पूरा की और 1848 में 1848 में उन्होंने फिर से शिक्षा की अभियान शुरू कर दिया शुरुआत में पढ़ नहीं पा रहे थे वो केवल सात आठ साल की शिक्षा ही उनकी है सात आठ साल की शिक्षा में ही वो बहुत सारी चीजों को वो पढ़ पाए स्कॉटिश मिशनरी स्कूल में और उस स्कूल में पढ़ करके फिर उन्होंने अपना आगे का रास्ता अपनाया हम जानते हैं उनके जीवन की उस घटना को जिनको धक्के देकर बारात से बाहर निकाल दिया गया था उनको कितना अपमान हुआ होगा आज हमें कोई धक्का देकर बाहर निकाले तो आपको क्या लगेगा और वो भी उनका एक कारीगर उनकी दुकान पर काम करने वाले व्यक्ति वो ब्राह्मण था तो वो वो उस सिचुएशन में आप अंदाजा लगाइए कि ये भूले जिस तरह के इतिहास का कंस्ट्रक्शन कर रहे थे जिस तरह के सवालों के साथ नई तरह की थ्यूरी थ्योराइज कर रहे थे नए सवालों को वो सवाल भारत के इतिहास में अब तक नहीं थे इसलिए वो आधुनिकता यानी इसलिए वो राष्ट्रपिता तक की खित, का खित, 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 खित आ, उनको उनको देने वाले इस देश के लोगों ने उनको राष्ट्रपिता तक कहा है कि असल का राष्ट्रपिता वो है जो राष्ट्र के लिए उन अभावग्रस्त लोगों के लिए कुछ देता हो इसलिए वो उस सवाल को लेकर के आते हैं और उन पूरे पूरी वैदिक संरचना पर सवाल उठाते हैं कि आपकी वैदिक संरचना और उसके बदले में शिक्षा की जो संरचना जो इक्वलिटी के बेस्ड हो इक्वलिटी के बेस पर होनी चाहिए उस संरचना का वो आगे उस उसका एक कंस्ट्रक्शन करके हमें देते हैं कि हमें इस तरह के सवाल के साथ आगे चलना होगा अगर आपको बराबरी चाहिए तो शिक्षा लेनी होगी बराबरी चाहिए तो आपको लड़ना होगा बराबरी चाहिए तो आपस में बंधु और प्रेम का व्यवहार करना होगा आपस में जाति व्यवहार छोड़ना होगा एक दूसरे के साथ अनटचेबिलिटी को इन सारी चीजों को समाप्त करना होगा तो ये जो मुद्दे हैं इन पूरे इन सभी मुद्दों को इस तरह से देखा जाना चाहिए एक सवाल इसमें यह भी है कि फूले खेती को लेकर के भी सवाल उठाते हैं अपनी रचना में किसान का कूड़ा में वो इन मुद्दों को लेते हैं कि किस तरह से किसानों के साथ किस किस तरह से जोशी जी सेठ जी भट्ट जी जिसको सेठ जी भट्ट जी के रूप में हम की रचनाओं में देखते हैं जिसको बाबा साहब आगे चल करके उसी को ब्राह्मणवाद और पूंजीवाद कहते हैं ब्राह्मणवाद पूंजीवाद उसी को है और एक और जो है हरियाणा के छोटू राम जो पिजेंट्री मोमेंट के को लेकर के जो गुलाम भारत में जो एक रेवेन्यू मिनिस्टर थे पंजाब के पंजाब के तो उन्होंने भी एक ट्रम दी थी वो उस उसी उस उस ट्रम के आधार पर जिसमें वो ये कहते हैं कि ये जो जो पाखंड करने वाला समाज है इस पाखंड करने वाले समाज के साथ हमें किस तरह से व्यवहार करना होगा जो किस तरह से ये मंडी और फंडी का सवाल उन्होंने उठा था फंडी कौन है फंड फंड एक शब्द है लोकल शब्द है फंड फंड फंडी यानी जो धन वाला नहीं है फंड वाला नहीं है ये इंग्लिश वाला नहीं है ये ये पंजाबी और हरियाणवी का एक शब्द है फंडी फंडी का मतलब है जो बहुत तरह के पाखंड करता है ब्राह्मणवाद मंडी बाजार मंडी और फंडी ब्राह्मणवाद पूंजीवाद सेठ जी भट्ट जी ये सारी टेक्नोलॉजी मिलती है और बहुत बार हम देखते हैं कि अगर और किसी स्टेट की लैंग्वेज में भी इस तरह की बहुत सारी टेक्नोलॉजी हो सकती है वहां पर भी इस तरह के शब्द हो सकते हैं 
यानी लोगों के बीच में उस विचार का एक्सटेंशन समय समय पर हम होते हुए देखते हैं तो आ, मेरा कहना यह है कि ज्योतिबा फूले का आना भारत के इतिहास में एक क्रांति का काम है रिवॉल्यूशन है रिवॉल्यूशन इन इन द सेंस इस इस नजरिए से है क्योंकि उसके आने से जो मरे हुए लोग थे जिनमें सांस तो चल रहे थे लेकिन ह्यूमन डिग्निटी उनमें नहीं थी उनमें ह्यूमन डिग्निटी पैदा कर दी वो लोग जो हर रोज पैरों तले तो रोंदे जाते थे उन उनके बीच में ये सवाल पैदा कर दिया हम भी पढ़ सकते हैं और इसीलिए वो मनु को खाक होता हुआ दिखाते हैं कि मनु क्यों खाक हो रहा है मनु यानी आग में कोई लकड़ी डालते हैं तो जलती है राख बनती है खाक हो जाती उड़ जाती है तो वही शब्द है कि वो लकड़ी जो है जो इस हिसाब से जल रही है मनु जल रहा है क्यों जल रहा है क्योंकि तो इसको लगता है कि ये बराबर आ रहे हैं मनु का जलना इस चीज का प्रतीक है कि मनु हमेशा भेदभाव का वाचक और प्रतीक बना रहेगा जब तक भारतीय या दुनिया के समाजों में मनु की चर्चा होगी तो ये सवाल उठता रहेगा कि मनु कौन क्या था मनु गैर बराबरी का मसीहा पूरे समाज को भेदभाव से भरने वाला उसकी संहिता रचने वाला तो ये जो सवाल है फूले के जो सवाल हैं बहुत मार्के के सवाल हैं और हम सभी की आंख खोलने वाले सवाल हैं उन और हमारा ये फर्ज है कि इन सवालों को हम और ज्यादा लोगों तक और ज्यादा विद्यार्थियों तक और ज्यादा वहां तक पहुंचा पाए जहां तक ये जा सकते हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि इन कुछ सवालों के साथ में अपनी बात को यही पूरा करना चाहता हूँ और ये कहना चाहता हूँ एक नजरिए के हिसाब से कि अगर ईमानदार नेतृत्व हो जो मैं प्रोफेसर तुलसीराम इस कोटेशन के साथ जोड़ता हुआ कह रहा हूं अगर नेतृत्व में ईमानदारी हो तो इतना बड़ा समाज है इतना बड़ा समाज है उस समाज को खड़ा किया जा सकता है और शोषण अन्याय हिंसा का उसको अहिंसा में रूपांतरित किया जा सकता है और अपना उस वजूद को स्थापित किया जा सकता है जिस वजूद को लेकर के हम एक एक दो दो सीट के लिए भीख मांगते घूम रहे हैं एक ही दे दो मैं अपनी कम्युनिटी को तुम्हारे आगे डालता हूं एक सीट दे दो ये एक नई तरह की कंस्ट्रक्शन हो सकती है कुछ समय पहले इस तरह कंस्ट्रक्शन हुई थी लेकिन उस कंस्ट्रक्शन के जो रिजल्ट थे वो अच्छे नहीं रहे बहुत सारे कारण उसमें हो सकते हैं लेकिन हमें ये नए तरह के कंस्ट्रक्शन के बारे में सोचना पड़ेगा नए तरह के कंस्ट्रक्शन जिसमें इतनी बड़ी इस आबादी का 80 प्रतिशत से अधिक जो तबका है वो शोषित पीड़ित अपमानित है हिंसा झेल रहा है किसानी के नाम पर अभी हमने देखा ये दिल्ली के आसपास क्या हो रहा था और हुआ क्या आखिर में तो ये सारे सवाल हैं जिन सवालों के आधार पर बड़े स्तर पर जनता उनके समूह को इकट्ठा किया जा सकता है अन्याय और शोषण से मुक्ति का एक आह्वान चला जा सकता है जिसको तुलसीराम कह रहे हैं कि राजनीतिक पार्टियों की जरूरत नहीं है सामाजिक अभियान चले और जाति विरोधी अभियान चले जब जाति विरोधी अभियान चलेगा तो वो अपने आप मर जाएगा जो आपको जातियों में बांट रहा है तो ये कुछ बातें मुझे फूले जयंती के सब पर आप बीच में कहनी थी और कि फूले की जो एक लंबी लड़ाई है ये पता नहीं कितनी स्थापित उपलब्ध जाकर के फुलफिलमेंट हासिल करेगी वक्त लगेगा क्योंकि हम को भी भी फूले को बचाने शेड्यूल कास्ट के लोग या ट्राइब के लोग या ट्राइब वालों को शेड्यूल कास्ट नहीं समझता है और शेड्यूल कास्ट को ट्राइब नहीं समझता है ओबीसी को शेड्यूल कास्ट नहीं समझता है मुस्लिम उसको नहीं समझता है यानी वो पूरा जो कम्युनिटी है जो एक सामूहिक संघर्ष का प्रतीक बनकर के उभरने की जो बात है वो बने तो हम सभी फूले के उन, उन महान मिशन को पूरा कर सकते हैं जिस मिशन को कह रहे हैं कि अब हमें मनु नहीं चाहिए अब हमें 
अब हमें एक तरह की समानता बंधुता और भ्रातृत्व या बहनापे का समाज चाहिए जिसमें सभी लोग मिल करके रह सकें और किसी के साथ न्याय न हो लेकिन उसके लिए हमें खड़ा होना होगा ये कुछ बातें मैंने आपके बीच की धन्यवाद
दलित पोएट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र हु वॉज अ ब्रिलियंट पोएट he at that time criticizes the idea of pollution he said he said that if birth is the genesis of pollution then everybody is polluted why the dalits are polluted so this kinds of very particular questions were asked by sokha mera however sokha mera could not could not explain why there is a pain why he has to suffer the pain of being under the and his answer was his answer was that in earlier births i have committed a crime of criticizing lord krishna magcha janma krishna ninda ghadli manun maharajan prapt so you have to understand that the causality about our pain is been attributed to a consciousness which which was built by the brahmic literature the great saint and profoundly profoundly great saint however he could not address the very issue of pain of impotence what is this rupture when phule talks about it phule in certain sense brings history and what is history history is man made the whole idea of puranic or mythological history where the divine intervention is always there this is something which is being carried out by the gods and now this is history of man the caste is created by men and obviously caste is created by men then it can be abolished by men so you have to understand that pulle uh, in certain sense has brought history to negotiate with the pain of untouchable pain of shudras pain of women and there you will find this rupture is taking place you might be knowing that phule at that time was building his ideas on western thought largely this western thought which he somehow has carried out was rationalism empiricist rationalism and uh, you all know about him that he was influenced by thomas paine and second you have to understand that he has a great kind of engagement with indian political thought indian philosophy and therefore you have to understand he was the first kind of thinker who was refereeing buddhism as a mainstream he was the first man who was refereeing the the charavak philosophy prasprasti as the tradition of party against caste he was talking about the medieval saint kind of contestation so in certain sense he was building his ideas to a certain kind of negotiation with western thought as well as the uh, indigenous indian kind of anti caste tradition now we have to see that what exactly he is talking the important aspect we might be knowing about is jp deshpande who used to be from jnu uh, had first uh, noted that pulle was talking about the power and knowledge but however gpd never explained what was police knowledge and if at all you can read pulle pulle defines knowledge by by classifying it there are three kinds of knowledge is for it because it says one kind of knowledge is are about the knowledge of self you are listening to me i am in lecture to you these are subject position i am a teacher you are student and that subject positions are we we are somehow performing it these subject positions are given by a body of knowledge and this body of knowledge where you have a gender caste subject positions you have caste subject positions fully questions are these kinds of subject position are are acquired by you yourself and then you understand that no the very idea of being brother the very idea of being father the very idea of sister mother all these ideas which you are performing as subject positions are given by a structure that structure is basically structure of knowledge 
and therefore play both in certain sense visionary to somehow point out this very kind of we can say structure of knowledge and he says that history is a ground where you can go where you can negotiate where you can somehow have a certain kind of an understanding of yourself and history he perceived as a kind of a, a kind of ground where you can somehow know about human past and through human past understanding human past you can somehow approach to this kind of pain of adversity pain of uh, the peasantry pain of uh, being uh, artisan caste pain of being women and all such kinds of pain so one has to understand that this is a certain kind of understanding which is given to us the second kind of important aspect of knowledge is knowledge he says anubhavik nya that is a certain kind of empiric knowledge and this knowledge is everywhere i am speaking to you through this mic you are listening to me and these kinds of things which mankind has invented through empiric knowledge and here you will find that this particular empiric knowledge is having a certain kind of you can say privilege of the brahmins and the shudra the ati shudra the women are denied access to education so you have to understand the how college the politics of knowledge is being displayed by them and third is the kind of you can say knowledge of ethical behavior and knowledge of ethics and you know that kind of ethics where uh, you you can say behave in home you behave in classroom you behave in society there is a some kind of you can say whole arching scheme of ethics and this kind of ethical knowledge is also structured by brahmins so there is a certain kind of whole arching frame of brahmanism which is in certain say uh, sense enslaving you through this kind of body of knowledge the body of knowledge. so it is interesting that why pule is important to us even today because pule was talking about avidya it's very interesting term and the real speakers have made mention of it avidya it's interesting term and you will find that pule in certain sense resonates ramchi several ways i i don't claim that pule in certain sense was can say explaining each and everything with gramchi has written but interestingly because pule was a great cast pule could do it better basically because he could know the nature of avidya better what is avidya in indian philosophy in indian philosophy particularly the example of hinduism uh, it is a hurdle between the salvation They, they 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 project of the human being is nothing but to achieve salvation and this particular kind of avidya is nothing but a hurdle a factor into this process of salvation in buddhism there is another kind of you can say explanation that is the principal cause of pain dukkha the main link of the main link of pain is avidya that is what exactly buddhism is talking about and what is according to advaita not having understanding of the, the this whole kind of unity of the atman and brahman that is that is what is avidya interestingly phule in certain sense is deriving different meanings of avidya and that is very, that is very important one meaning is very clear that is illiteracy and this illiteracy is very important kind of we can say we can say for uh, more to which the, the the productive laboring classes is for shudra te shudra were denied to emancipation because they had a concrete kind of knowledge of productivity they were doing the labor but because they don't have access to education they cannot they cannot in certain sense invent they cannot in certain sense advance the body of language which they are perform in that sense so one has to understand that this is avidya illiteracy 
And as already the, the earlier speaker also mentioned that it, in certain sense, Harish was making the point, this is making, Aditya is making the Shudra, Ati Shudra women as precise subjects. That is an important kind of, you can say, observation which Pule is making. What is this? Pule, in certain sense, has taken the cue from Buddhism. Buddhi, in Buddhism, the one understanding of the avidya is misconception of reality. Misconception of reality. And here we find that misconception of reality, and now particularly if you are in this kind of, we can say, era, post-truth era as you define, and you will understand what exactly Pule was talking about. This is avidya, is misconception of reality. And what is this misconception of reality? Pule talks this Quranic, Quranic literature, enormous Quranic literature, is creating different ideas which are not real. Which are not real. And you are searching your own agency under this kind of Brahminical misconceived knowledge. Untrue knowledge. And therefore one has to understand that what exactly you understand as Sokhagaya was doing, that as in earlier birth I had committed a crime of criticizing Lord Krishna. Therefore I have to suffer these this kinds of you can say allegedly in this part. So you can understand that how mythologies, how rituals how certain kinds of, we can say, religious practices are, we can say, created to do, to deceive the, the, the downtrodden people and particularly to give them the, this kind of the misconception of reality. So that is a very important aspect of Mahatma Phule. Mahatma Phule was talking about Avidya and interestingly, Mahatma Phule was talking about hegemony. Not exactly in the language of Brahmacharya. But interesting kind of term he gives us. Varakantisa Ashre. The, 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 the translation would be superficial patronage. Superficial patronage. And you have to understand that in villages, the toiling Shudra Ati Shudra are dependent on Brahmins or high castes. And the very grounding of dependence is structured around around this around this this, this dependence in structure around this misconception misconceived ideas and therefore one has to understand that this idea is having a certain sense that these are Brahmin can somehow make out problem solved Brahmin can help you in your problems the Purohit is definitely a, a, a guru, a, a kind of, you can say, teacher. He, he is a savior and he only can help you. In these precarious situations, Brahmin is, in certain sense, can help you. And that is a condition which is created, structured in villages and, or you can say, every part of India. So this is a kind of condition of hegemony, a superficial patronage which is talking about that we are the well wishers of Shudra Adi Shudra and you will find the relationship is very in certain sense is complex where Brahmin claim that we are in position to help you in your own interest. So this idea of hegemony will be there and interestingly if you, if you might have access to Pule's interesting kind of drama Titya Ratna. Huh? It is translated, somehow it is translated. This Titirat is important kind of piece where a peasant woman is in certain sense was uh, forced into caste labor. And it is a very important aspect as Harish was talking about. Pule was a visionary thinker basically because he has understood caste in terms of labor. And this, in certain sense, has given us an enormous kind of ways to understand caste. There are several ways we understand caste. We understand caste through 
using class is cast. We understand class cast through uh, making some kind of comparison with race, but most kind of can say fruitful, fruitful kind of comparison would be slavery and caste. And therefore, you have to understand that how slavery is structured. And here is an interesting kind of example where a peasant woman who is having a certain kind of sense of self and asking a Brahmin that you should not ask arms to us, Dakshina, you don't ask Dakshina. You yourself do work, we are doing hard labor. You also perform hard labor. Why you are coming to us and asking arms? The, the Brahmin in, 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 having a can say, uh, can say track. Brahmin in some certain sense says that you, you, you are giving a birth to a child and that child would be, the birth of that child would be de detrimental to your husband. He'll die if he, you can say he takes birth. So she, she being a kind of woman and her subject would be structured as women, she is, she is certain hands, you can say, care, she should to care her husband as well as her son and therefore she succumbs to the kind of ritualistic practices which are inflicted on her. She herself get exploited and she succumbed to exploiting willingly and thus willingness is very important. Fully volumes of this willingness that how are Shudra, the Shudra women are in certain sense where, 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 where you can say shaped that they themselves are willingly accepting their, you can say, servility, their kind of exploitation and they don't have any kind of way that is. So we find, I don't go, go to into a detail of it, Thule in certain sense uh, uses a very metaphoric terms and he says that uh, as the serpent coil, with many points you might, might be knowing that uh, the, the, uh, the Asgar, uh, when, when it you can say, surrounds you, it makes you in your void. It's serpent coil. And uh, where you can't move, you can't have your own kind of, we can say, wish to, we can say, free out of it. So, Pule uses this kind of serpent coil, and you might be there, we find it in this, this, Shetkar and Sasu, living body. So, one has to understand that how the consciousness is structured through avidya and structured practices of knowledge. And these practices of knowledge, as Pule has defined, are Knowledge is about you can say self food. Knowledge is about the empirical knowledge as, as, as well as ethical knowledge. All these things of knowledge is where in certain way controlled by Brahmins and therefore this caste slavery was inflicted on the uh, downtrodden caste as well as you can say women. So this is a very important kind of uh, fascinating kind of understanding which could be used. I won't go to detail, but uh, you can learn in his writing. The second aspect, why he was in certain sense was uh, very clearly talking about the caste labor and why it is relevant today. One has to understand this. You have to understand that in 19th century, Saukar and Brahmin are having a certain relationship. Which relationship is power relationship? The caste power relationship is such that the, the, the untouchables, the Shudras are getting exploited. And what is this position? You know that in uh, particular villages, the, the Brahman is Bapu, his father. Brahmin is Guru, <coughs> he is a master and these terms are there. In Pule's writing, this Saukas Mandinder is addressed by the peasant as my bab. And you will find that how the, the whole kind of power relations are structured. Ambedkar makes this point in uh, his Anish of the caste, where he says that uh, the Brahmin, three Varnas, are having position of being father. And the Shudra is having position of war. 
this whole kind of we can say gender conditioning is in certain sense is structuring way that you accept your celebrity, you accept your exploitation, you accept the proposition. So interesting aspect of play is detailing the exploitative technology, dominance and technology of dominance. And it is interesting. For example, Fulay makes a point which is not in Marxian lexicon. And one has to you can say, know it. That Fulay was talking about the exchange. Exchange is unequally exchange. If at all, an untouchable labor comes at market. Can he negotiate? It is a contract. You know that this is a certain kind of change which has happened in uh, 19th century and 20th century because of colonialism. It is uh, from status to contact. Whether the untouchable labor can ask the labor as a wish. And you will find no. Cheap labor is there are all around India. It's most Labor can be there. Why? Because you will find that this exchange is structured to this particular kind of caste relations of power. Even today, in the kind of can say, capitalism, when we understand that the mode of production is capitalist mode of production, even though you will find this particular kind of structure of exchange is there. The peasant would be not having capability to negotiate. He would be dependent. And this dependence is structured in caste relationship. And therefore, you will find exploitation takes place. So, Ambedkar, when he is talking about destitution degradation, there are several levels of destitution degradation. Operate, operates in Shudra, or it operates to under children. This is different. But how you want to understand that this particular kind of exchange and certain kind of exploitation and dominance is practiced. And therefore, one has to understand what Ambedkar was talking about, the system of exploitation. The equality in the exploitation is very important. And if at all you have to understand in today's context what Flair is talking about, the exchange. And you will find, and everywhere, Take example of peasantry, we find that when peasant takes out his agriculture produce to market. He is dependent, he is gullible. He is weak in calculation. He is religious minded. Scrupulous. So scrutiny, not having a certain kind of mastery or calculation, having dependence is the structure where the peasant, Shudra peasants are exploited today. Even today, that is practices very rampant. Now the multinationals are there and multinationals are selling the seeds. And we will find the, the, the all kinds of peasantry is dependent on the seeds. And you take the example of how, how many times this, the, the prices of seeds have increased, and you will find that this whole kind of structure of exploitation. And therefore, Fulay is very important to us. That he is not talking about only about the dominance and the ideology and certain kind of say, structures of uh, assets of it. He was also talking about the economic mode of exploitation. And certainly, uh, history is important because Fulay, in certain sense, identifies ideology and violence as the forces of history. So, the point to which uh, uh, Professor Harish was making of consciousness is the ideology. And how this ideology is operating, and how one can somehow counter this kind of ideology is very important. Aspect. And there, uh, we have to can say come to terms. What Fule was doing and why why Fule is not quoted in certain kinds of you can say history books as historian. Vaishni was making this point that uh, we are in certain sense are not going to play as historian. 
So one has to understand that Kule at that time was doing a gigantic kind of exercise. Uh, you know that uh, in positivist uh, scheme of history, there is a slogan, no document, no history. No document, no history. So, those people, the women, the Shudra, the Shudra, they, who were denied right to education, who were not having any kind of access to education, can they write their own kind of accounts? Pule has, in certain sense, has set up a gigantic task of writing the history of Shudra, the Shudra. And you can understand that this is a predicament. That you don't have documents. So, what Pule did? Pule, in certain sense, has invoked Viko. I won't go to kind of details of it, how Viko was made accessible to Mahatma Pule, what kind of Viko Pule followed, and what way it, in certain sense, influenced. But it's important. That Viko, the Mita Viko, was telling that, yes, mere, mere kind of written sources are not enough to write history. If, if it is a certain kind of account of Peshwa, particularly Peshwa and Shibakhar, Tariq of Peshwa, and you will find that Tariq of Peshwa has a certain kind of political purpose, whether that could be taken as the concrete truth. And historians are ready, yes, we can't take it as concrete truth. So, if that is a kind, kind of guess the situation, then you should go for alternative sources. At that time, Biko said that mythology, myths, also can be used to write history. He said that etymology also can be used to write history. He also said that the anthropology or traditions can be used to write history. Interestingly, what Pule was doing, Pule was in certain sense was enhancing this kind of, you can say, predicament and was, you can say, making history larger by adopting these techniques. It is interesting that uh, uh, because it's that this is a historical narrative which are carved into poetic language. He says it, it, it's, a, it, it's not it, it, ethnic narratives. And he also says that the, the kind of, you can say, uh, parties which are coming into these mythologies are nothing but class representatives. What he says? They are class representatives. And you will find that this whole kind of the Shaotara story, the Shaotara, you can, uh, the Vishnu incarnation story, was turned into history by today. And he said this is a certain kind of history which in the explains the whole kind of, you can say, scheme of Brahmin dominance. And he, in certain sense, explains it, that how through this Vishnu incarnation, we can understand the whole process of the Brahmin domination. So this is, the, we, we will find that way he was going. Secondly, you will find that he was using etymology. Etymology is uh, linguistic etymology is the integral to historical method. And uh, particularly if you are doing ancient Indian history, you know all know particularly students in history know that it, without etymology, uh, the one sentence cannot be derived in uh, ancient Indian past. So this is a very essential part. Third thing is that he was using anthropology. And for example, in Maharashtra, you might not be, you can say, aware about the, the practices of Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, there are two kind of tradition of, or, or you can say, memorizing or, or invoking money. Uh, one kind of, you can say, practice which is there at the Brahmin houses is that at Sibulanga, you know the Sra. The Sra is the kind of festival where uh, this is celebrated as victory. And there is a kind of boundary crossing, Sivo Langan. And the heroic kind of, you can say, passions are in certain sense, are the member of the celebrated in the Shra festival. The Brahmin male, Brahmin male, crosses the boundary, comes back to his home, and performs a ritual of killing money. 
a bury in the form of rice. Bury in the form of rice. It's killed in each Brahmin house, even today. Even this modern style. Some of you who might be belonging to Maharashtra or any other place, you will find even other places the Brahmins are performing this ritual. And in non brahmin or Shudra to Shudra kind of habitus, the Bari is commemorated as Ida Pida Taro Bari Saraja, coming of, coming of, he is celebrated as coming of Bari. Now, uh, I, will, I will come to a certain kind of, you can say, complex kind of, you can say, uh, part, is that was fully writing in Spain. Arkule was, as Harish was making a point, he was in certain sense giving imagination. Aparna Devre is a, uh, uh, is a historian and she has uh, said that Kule uh, under particular treatment of history is mythological and imaginative. Uh, she says that uh, Kule's understanding of history is not objective. I, as a follower of Fule, I definitely understand that uh, the kind of facts Fule was uh, giving to us as the uh, fact of history are not acceptable. Mahatma Fule's treatment of mythology and deriving truth from mythology is not acceptable and even that was not acceptable to uh, Babasar Ambedkar also. Babasar Ambedkar also has, you can certain sense, have used this kind of, you can say, myths to write history, particularly who were the Shudras he has uh, taken seven versions of Vishwamitra and Vasishtha, uh, you can say, myth, and um, you can say, uh, collated it and given a certain kind of meaning to it. So, fine, Mahatma Pule has a certain kind of limitation, particularly of giving only Vishnu incarnation as a factual and direct kind of history. It can't be accepted as direct kind of history. But for him, it was not imagined. You have to understand that if you want to do history, and if there are absences, silences, and without understanding that absences and silences, if you cannot, if you cannot understand the present reality, you have to understand that history is always used to understand reality. Reality is, in certain sense, built by past. For example, I am giving you lecture without you, without you being here, without you. Being, we can say, thought about me, this was not be possible. There is history, even this present. Present cannot be without history. There is a component of present. In, a component of history in present. And you have to, you have to, in certain sense, unearth this kind of history to understand it. Fule might be wrong. We, we should not claim everything that Fule was doing was right. But what Fule was doing was very important. Fule was, in certain sense, unfolding in the predicament of present. And he could understand that, yes, there, there, is, there is a kind of forces, which, which forces is somehow supporting caste, and there is this kind of forces which is opposing caste. And therefore, he has to understand that how it has taken place. And importantly, the, 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 the principles of Fule are not wrong. His facts, uh, facts might be wrong. What exactly he is claiming? He is claiming that there was a caste model in the If you take as this as a fact, then you will find this, yes, he is not wrong. His facts may be wrong about Vishnu incarnation. But what kind of frequency analysis is derived from that fact is it, that, that is acceptable? Yes. He was explaining how the patriarchy emerged. The aggressive male, the aggressive selfish male used violence 
and culture against women. That is his analysis. Whether it is wrong, even today the patriarchy is practiced through violence. So, Fule, in certain sense, was uh, visionary to explain us these facets of, we can say, past. And therefore, one has to understand that exactly what he was doing, he was, in certain sense, unfolding the whole kind of contradictions, as Harish was telling about, the multiple contradictions and intersectionality within it. And this is a fabulous aspect of my Atma Kule was dealing concrete, concrete realities. And why many times uh, the people like Kule and Ambedkar are important? Because they were not doing theory for sake of theory. They were doing theory to be mindset. And therefore, they have better advantage of theory rather than of some certain kind of, we can say, lexicon as you are fashionable enough to speak on or things they dwell on, they were in certain sense they concretely dealing things. And therefore, his history is important to us because in certain sense it takes out anthropology as well. And even today, you will find that anthropology is very, it's a powerful method through which you can uh, do history. And written because of certain kind of protocols of writing history. We are not going to oral histories, we are not going to anthropological history, we are not going to other kinds of resources to do, do history. And play in that in sense for innovative method. So this is very important. Second aspect of it, and that is very important, that he was empiricist. And this empiricism has to be understood in different ways. For example, Fuller at that time was talking about uh, three kinds of logics. Interesting. Fully was fabulous thinker. And as you are knowing about epistemology, and many times uh, in uh, philosophies uh, you have to somehow explain epistemology, ontology of that thinker, you definitely should go for Fully. In Maharashtra, these debates are old enough that whether Fully and Ambedkar were philosophers or not, I claim they were the philosopher because they dealt with the issues of epistemology and ontology, not as philosopher, but as the, 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 the kind of condition, precarious condition of being, as Anshudras, Adishudras, or So therefore, one has to understand that this is a kind of facet which he was addressing. And this particular kind of facet which he was explaining to us, that History in certain sense can be used for imagination to paint sufficient. One aspect I will just explain is that as Harish was telling, that you need to know that it is possible. The, the idea of Pali. And there is the idea of the imagination of Pali in certain sense is important uh, because it, 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 it takes us the agency to be republican, the agency to be democratic the agency to be egalitarian. So, he in certain sense was portraying history, picking up certain kind of traditions of history, and explaining us about this through, you can say, a particular way. The other aspect one has to understand, why the, the thinkers of Maharashtra, and even in India, Bengal and other places, we are having the same theoretical plan. You have to understand. Baba Sambedkar has given a lecture on Randare, hmm? on his first centenary, very important lecture. And you will find that, yes, there was a certain kind of commonalities. They share things. Mahatma Kule's friends, well, they are so friends. They help uh, Mahatma Kule and they, 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 they are having certain kind of ability to Thomas Kule. There were many kids in Brahmin, uh, educated class who were Thomas Paine at court. However, my Kule was different. And there one has to understand that Kule, in certain sense, was doing a certain, I can say, uh, I can say coming out of the trap of caste. Caste 
subjective. If you are fighting caste within the mode of, within the true of caste subjectivity, you can't take it. You have to take out a certain kind of departure and that departure has to have a certain kind of break. And Fule was in certain sense, was, you can say, different than his contemporaries basically because his rupture with past and his, his in certain sense invocation of ideas, two things, his rupture with past, he was greatly criticizing the Peshwa and you find Radhane could not. Mahatma Pule gave up his home and started the school. Randale, when it came that he was the exponent of widow remarriage, when his wife died, and then people said that it is the best opportunity to, to, to you to, to show that you are a reformer. He said that every every kind of you can say reforms goes through a kind of you can say utkranti. Some kind of you can say uh, evolution. And you will find that he accepted the dictum of his father. What is it? Departure from past. And it's interesting. The departure of past has a certain kind of invocation of classic. Departure with past has an invocation of classic. And that invocation of classic is very important. The classic for Radhale was Vaidik age. And the classic for Mahatma Phule was Vaisraj. And you have to understand that these two kind of, you can say, worldviews had a different kind of impact in their own action. Phule was radical. Ranale was conservative. Phule was favorite French innovation. Phule was Thomas Pinion. Ranale was taking a Burke. You might be knowing uh, the debate between Burke and uh, Thomas Paine. Burke was very, very uncomfortable with it. And uh, he rejected it. He was a feminist, but said that things should take its own course slowly, slower. And so one has to understand that uh, fully in certain sense was radical, evolutionary, basically, because the way he was taking departure from past and was invoking the, the uh, ideal. And that ideal was or it was not imagined. He built through anthropology. He had his own kind of anthropological fact which he was building. You presently might not, we can say, accept this, but you have to understand that uh, this is a modality to which uh, play was negotiating. There are several things I could not, in certain sense, could give justice to the kind of ideas he was opting about patriarchy. I could not explain you about the way he explained you this whole kind of structure of caste subject to meaning all kinds of things, but I know that I have taken more time than my earlier experience speaker. So I thank you and thank you all for giving me opportunity to speak in front of you. I always like to be near you and to speak in front of such a kind of great uh, audience. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.
writing that his first thesis is that the Brahmins came from out of India and subjected the indigenous process to unimaginable atrocities. On that note, Dr. Ambedkar in his book, Who uh, Wrote the Sutras, takes a different stand. He is of the opinion that Brahmins did not came from uh, outside or say there. You know the iron debate thing, they are doing. But like the, the method of this writing of Kuhl and Ambedkar, academically speaking, and both people. So my question is here, which history are we going to? How do we deal with these contradictions? <laughs> I have a similar question. Yes, I have a similar question. Who will the question address? Who will the question is addressed? Professor Bagat. Where are you? Uh, so I have a similar question. And uh, my question is on the claim that Ule's uh, derivation from the myth is imaginative or he is considering the Hindu myths or even the Vishnu incarnations are fact. I have a counter view to that. I have a critic to that. Reading Pule, like when Pule writes, uh, I'll take a bit time to explain my question. When Pule writes slavery, the very first thing he mentions in the preface and introduction is there is the Brahmin myths are lies and treachery. This language is he uses. But then we take his way of writing as uh, something that he has taken into fact when he is completely mentioning that these are lies. At the same time, when he is deconstructing, he is also saying there is an impossibility in the mythical characters, mythical gods. Brahma is an impossible person. One cannot have four reproductive uh, organs. The uh, Hiranyakasab is an impossible character. What he is doing in my reading is he is taking a thought, like he is taking a Brahminical thought is there, a Brahminical person is there, he is thinking person not as a real person, but person as a thought of a person that occurred in the history. And the thought, today we are sitting here, today if we have to tell a story, if you ask me to tell a story, I can tell a story of a Superman or a Batman considering the social relation of the uh, social relation of the place I am sitting. So what I what in my reading, when Fule is thinking about probably Masyabata, Katsavata, the logical conclusion is saying that this thought of Masya as a person coming, the thought of Katsav is coming because there is sea route travel, possibility of sea route travel at least. Or the idea of uh, like Parsuram, Parsuram probably is not a person, but it is a personification of an idea of a war that happened. And this idea exists, that's why the idea of Parsuram exists. So I think uh, I will totally disagree when we, when the police, when saying it's a lie, but it's a derivative thought through logic. So I think this can still be considered not as imaginative, but a derivative uh, from the imagination that happened of a time and from that a logical questioning is there and so is this today.
पेशवाई या ब्राह्मीन या तमाम जो बहुत बड़ा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इसके बाद हम देखते हैं कि बाबा साहब मनुस्मृति जलाते हैं उन्नीस सौ सत्ताईस में पच्चीस दिसंबर उन्नीस सौ सत्ताईस में जहां तक मैं जानता हूं लेकिन बाबा साहब उन्नीस सौ चौबीस में समता सैनिक दल बनाते हैं तो हमारे यहाँ जो मिलिट्री कॉन्सेप्ट है जो हम एजुकेशन पे इतना फोकस करते हैं अगर इस रूप को कोई गन से घेर ले तो हम जितने भी यहाँ सच्चे बैठे हैं हमारे पास कोई गन नहीं कि हम उन पर हमला बोल रहे तो जो मिलिट्री का कॉन्सेप्ट रहा है सैनिक का जो कॉन्सेप्ट रहा है हमारे मूवमेंट में जैसे हम कहते हैं कि अठारह सौ अठारह की लड़ाई में हमने पेशवाओं को थ्रू चला दी हमारे पांच सौ महा बटालियन ने जो है अट्ठाईस हजार पेशवाओं को रिमूव कर दिया वो रेवल्यूशन एजुकेशन और से नहीं हो सकता था मानते हैं उसके पीछे एक मेथड है लेकिन जब हम देखते हैं कि बाबा साहब समता सैनिक दल क्यों बनाते हैं वही बाबा साहब कहते हैं एजुकेट 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 और वही भोले साहब के बिहार में जो लोग ही साधु खड़े हैं वही सम्राट अशोक के बगल में उनकी सेना बहुत भिक्खों के रूप में बैठी हुई है तलवार लेकर के जो तो हम इन तमाम चीजों को क्यों भूल जाते हैं और जब जो जैसे धर्मपुरी में मुझे लगता है दो हजार चौदह या तेरह की घटना है धर्मपुरी जिला तमिलनाडु का वहां पे तीन सौ दलितों के घर जला दिए गए उनके जो फोटो जंतर मंत्र के देखे सैकड़ों फोटो थे उसमें गाँव के लोगों के घरों में सोफा है अच्छी टीवी है फोर व्हीलर गाड़ियां है तमाम चीजें लेकिन उनके घर को जला दिया गया कुछ नहीं कर रहे हैं अभी मोस्टली जितने लोग हम लोग यहाँ बैठे हैं अगर आप अपने घर के बारे में सोचे कि आईडिया सिक्योरिटी हमारे पास क्या है तो हमारे घर में सब्जी के काटने वाले चाकू के अलावा कोई दूसरा होगा भी नहीं ये बहुत छोटी बात नहीं है अगर आप अपनी सिक्योरिटी आप ही समझते हैं कि एजुकेशन ले लेंगे सब कुछ हासिल कर लेंगे तो ये पॉसिबल नहीं है प्राइवेटाइजेशन और क्या नाम है तमाम जो मिलिट्राइजेशन हो रहा जो ऑपरेशन हो रहा है ऑपरेशन कोई आपका मदद से या एजुकेशन से तो नहीं कर रहा उसके पीछे माइंड सेट है जो मार रहे आप नहीं बोल पाते हैं क्यों आप पुलिस के पास जाते हैं डर जाते हैं क्यों क्योंकि पुलिस भी पिटाई करेगा अंदर ये जो जो सेंस है वायलेंस का जो है और जो सिक्योरिटी का भी सेंस है ये दोनों का मिक्स होना चाहिए हमको लगता है कि हम लोगों ने वेपन को बहुत निगेटिव में लिया है निगेटिविटी के रूप में लिया है उसको बहुत अलग तरीके से लिया है अगर कोई हमारे बीच में कोई नौजवान आता है लड़ने की बात करता है तो हम उसको कहते हैं ये इमोशनल है ये नहीं लड़ सकता वही विक्टिमाइजेशन होता है तो हम सोचते हैं वही नौजवान आ जाए हमारे बीच में हमारे लड़ने की बात करें तो मुझे लगता है कि लहुजी सालवे की कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को समता सैनिक दल की कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को दलित पैंथर के कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को सम्राट अशोक के कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को और क्या नाम भीमा पूरे गाँव के जो सैनिक थे इन तमाम लोगों को उसी सिक्वेंस में देखने की जरूरत है जिस तरीके से हम बहुत सारे फ्रेंच फिलोसफर को कोट करते हुए सुनते हैं तो हमारे जो योद्धा रहे हैं उनके बारे में थोड़ा कोट में तो ज्यादा सही है थैंक यू वेरी मच
were lecture, so you can now understand it as for a section. Actor and actor. This is a prasthik kind of, you can say, you can say understanding of the group. The second kind of logic which he says that the very important is of logic of inference. And you also all understand that uh, the inference is there, that uh, the wind has flown the ship. So, this inference is certain way derived from the mass. So, it's logically important. And there now we will somehow come to the view what Kule was saying. Kule says that in the natural experience, the Kalpanetian Taranga, the wavering shape of imagination, wavering shape of imagination. Since are ridiculing the gods, 
which are in certain sense celebrated, which are in certain sense are uh, uh, glorified in the mandits are now criticized as we say that yes, who was Brahma? Brahma was telling untruths, so much so. Therefore, the myth is crafted that he has four heads because he was not telling one truth, he was telling several truths. So he was in certain deception. So therefore, it's in certain sense, we can say that strategy was deduction. Mockery. Desymbolization. This important kind of
have ever gone to the courts of Maharashtra, you will be experienced the kind of toughness it requires. Two hours, three hours, you have to climb the, the hill and then you have to garrison the whole fort.
He is right in the certain sense that fully we understood in terms of Sabdi Bhai, in terms of Sabdi Sarabhi, 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 and that is also an inner sign. This is fully Jainti, so it is obvious that we will be giving more time to this. Any other time, if you can say, have a discussion, these kinds of personalities are also important and we will discuss it. Thanks. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good. But I think, Maja, I think uh, Sir has explained most of the things. And this is the magic of uh, EDS conference of uh, the kind of questions that we get off of it. Uh, it simply tried uh, and asked us very, very difficult questions. Sir, I did not want to है कि आर्यन बाहर से आए 
मुख्य धारा का इतिहास इस बात को साबित करता है उसके पास जो एविडेंस है तो हम ये नहीं कह सकते कि पूरे के जो एविडेंसेस हैं वो मित निश्चित रूप से वो मित है उनके पास लेकिन मुख्य धारा का इतिहास भी इस चीज को साबित करता है कि वो इतिहास वही है जो इतिहास में लिखा गया है और भूले का जो निश्चित रूप से भूले एक ऐसा माहौल गढ़ रहे थे जो अल्टरनेटिव को अल्टरनेटिव हिस्ट्री का निर्माण करने के लिए जरूरी था जो सप्रेस्ड कम्युनिटीज हैं उनके बीच से एक आवाज बुलंद करने का काम भूले के उस दौर के उन मिथकों के माध्यम से उभरता हुआ दिखाई पड़ता है जिससे पहले नहीं है जो है भी तो उन कम्युनिटीज में नहीं है और भूले उनके जो अंदर खाने जो वहीं से निकले हुए लोग हैं या उनके अपने जो आ, आ, अपने जो उनके वैदिक करेक्टर्स हैं उन्हीं करेक्टर से ही वो चीज लेते और उन्हीं को निकाल करके उन्हीं को देते कि देखिए अपने इतिहास देखिए अपने मिथक का जो अपने जो इन इनका देखिए इन्होंने क्या किया है किस तरह से इन्होंने पूरे डिग्निटी को इन्होंने डिस्ट्रॉय किया है और हम डिग्निटी को एक तरह से इसको हम अपनी तरह से बनाने का काम शुरू करेंगे तो वो भूले का जो पूरा जो कंस्ट्रक्शन है वो इसी थोट पर है इसको हम इमेजिनेटरी टाइप ऑफ हिस्ट्री की बात करते हुए कहना चाहें तो कह सकते हैं लेकिन वो एक तरह से ह्यूमन डिग्निटी के लिए या सप्रेस्ड कम्युनिटीज की डिग्निटी के लिए इतिहास का नवनिर्माण या उसकी प्रतिस्थापना करने की बात वहां करते हुए दिखाई पड़ते हैं निश्चित रूप से बाबा साहब को लेकर के जो नस्लीय जो अवधारणा की बात अभी हो रही थी वो कि भारत में जो बंगाल में रहने वाला ब्राह्मण है और शेड्यूल कास्ट है और पंजाब में रहने वाला या चेन्नई में रहने वाला है निश्चित रूप से उन दोनों की भाषा के स्तर पर दोनों का एक जैसा ही प्रभाव दिखाई पड़ता है इसलिए नस्ली आधार पर इस बात को नहीं कहा कहा जा सकता है कि ये ये कि ब्राह्मण बाहर से आए और शेड्यूल कास्ट बाहर से नहीं आए इस थोट को बाबा साहब अपनी अपनी बात को कहते हुए इस बात को कह अपनी बात को इस तरह से कहते हैं कि वो नस्ल के आधार पर हम उसको उस तरह से नहीं देख सकते इसलिए वो कहते हैं कि ये सारे लोग यही कहे हैं आए तो सारे बाहर से आए नहीं आए तो कहीं कोई नहीं आया तो वो उबर सुतराज में उस बात को लेकर के वो बात कहते हैं तो वो अभी जो जो मार्शल आर्ट को लेकर के जो बात कह रहे थे कि हमने इसको बहुत बाद में भी देखा और पहले भी देखा कि मार्शल आर्ट क्योंकि हर एक कम्युनिटीज को अपनी सुरक्षा की चिंता रहती है साथ साथ उन लोगों को भी और सुरक्षा की चिंता रहती है जो पॉलिटिकल और सोशल अवेकनिंग के मोमेंट्स में रहते हैं उनकी फैमिलीज को लेकर के पूरे गांव को लेकर के पूरे उन सवालों को लेकर के रहता है इसलिए गांव से का जो विंग बना अलग से बना बाद में बना लेकिन बना उस उस दौरान वो विंग बना तो क्यों बना क्योंकि वह वहां कोई दूसरे लोग ना घुस जाए इसलिए उनको लट के साथ वहां तक तैयार रहना जरूरी था कोई बाहर आकर के वहां डिस्ट्रक्शन करे या बाधा पैदा करे तो उसके लिए जरूरी था तो ये सारे सवाल है कि एक तरह से मार्शल आर्ट के रूप में देखे और या जिन बातों को अभी कहा जा रहा था किसी भी तरह से नजर देखे की सुरक्षा बहुत जरूरी है और आप देखते ही हैं कि वो शस्त्र पूजा करने का अभियान चलाते हैं उसी दिन को चलाते हैं क्योंकि तो उनका वो उनके भी वो पूरे मिथक हैं और उन मिथकों के आधार पर वो रियलिटी को तोड़ देना चाहते हैं मिथकों के आधार पर और तोड़ ही दिया गया हम सभी को तो टूटे हुए लोग हैं ब्रोकन पीपल्स हैं हम सभी हम सभी मारे गए तोड़े गए लोग हैं महार रेजिमेंट की समार रेजिमेंट के इतिहास को भी कौन नहीं जानता है तो वो वो सवाल भी यहाँ है क्योंकि क्यों क्यों डिस्ट्रॉय किया गया जो उनको मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि कास्ट के नाम पर रेजिमेंट होनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी कम्युनिटीज के नाम पर भी है या तो सारे देश की कम्युनिटीज को ही आप बंद करिए वहां पर उनके नाम पर काहे को है तो वो अलग अलग तरह के सवाल है लेकिन यही बात मुझे कुछ कहनी थी बात यही हो नमस्कार सर 
there was one gentleman who raised this question of martial arts, to which I think both of you have responded already. But I think I interpreted this question a little differently. I mean, you have responded in the sense of historical terms. Uh, if I rephrase this question, uh, then and when I look at reality today, because I am working on violence against Dalits in India. Uh, so I don't see any such uh, organization or the kind of uh, the kind of assertion within my community or our community uh, which comes forward and which provides a sense of protection to our people, our women, our children. So, so is there any such